Okay, let's start it with a word of prayer. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, maker of all things that are seen and unseen, to you belongs all praise, glory, and honor. And help us now to look into your word and to understand it. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, for beside you there is not a God. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Hopefully we can finish off chapter 38 and then we'll have just two chapters to, to go on. Um, same thesis, we're covering, we're covering the same thesis. Uh, it is the glory of God to conceal the thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter. Okay, and so th there's a lot of things hidden in the Bible. I was talking to somebody yesterday. The Bible is so fantastic because it's so deep. The, the, and in the, it's up to us to how much information you want. And I never forget that 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 scene in the, in the movie, uh, uh, The Matrix, uh, where you take the red pill or the blue pill. Uh, one you'll forget you were ever here, and the other one is just how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? And that, to me, is the Bible. How far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? Because it's that deep. I mean, you can spend a thousand lifetimes, uh, somebody has said that, and you could still be digging. You'll never exhaust it. That's what it is. Um, oh, I mustn't use the mouse, because the mouse is messed up right now. So, we'll start, uh, we, we, we covered this last week, but we'll, let's go through it again. And the hanging for the gate, of the cord was of needlework, was needlework of blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen, and twenty cubits was the length, and and the height, and the breadth was five cubits, answerable to the hangings of the cord. So we saw how this gate. Uh, it says the needlework it talks about activity like a poem, like some create activity such as that and so I point out that out how and and the gate is made of the same material that you find in the veil the door and the gate they're the same material but they call they're called different things they're called the veil right before the holy of holies and it's called the door right before the a holy place and it's called the gate and I believe that's the gate to the world to the outside you know that's what you what we, I cannot see your two parts of you, which is your spirit and your soul. I cannot see that. They're hidden. They're covered. But the one part that I do see is your body. And that is the gateway, your gateway to the world, what you present. And so uh, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, the, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And I believe this, this shows the way, the truth, and the life show that these are the three curtains, uh, the three, um, the gate, the door, and the veil. Uh, and I believe the, the way is, corresponds to the gate, and the truth corresponds to the, to the door, and life corresponds to the veil. And their pillars were four, and their sockets of brass four, their books of silver, and the overlands of their capitals, and their fillet of silver. And all the pens of the tabernacle and of the court round about were of brass. Look at all the amazing detail God, he gives you everything. Uh, and, and, and at the very beginning, we talked about what these metals, uh, uh, what they represent. So here you have this, now we're talking about the, the court, and we're saying that all the posts that held up this, it was a seven foot uh, curtain um, made out of white linen, so you couldn't see over it unless you were um, taller than that. And um, you couldn't see the inside, and it was a white linen, but it was held up by these, these 20 uh, posts made out of, uh, made out of uh, brass, and so we know that brass stands for judgment, and their hooks and their uh, and, and the, the capitals were made out of silver, the the cap and the hooks that were on it. And it says capitol means head, 
and it's and it's funny because 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 that gave me a clue to say well and the pins were of brass the nails and so i think this is how you held this thing up it was held up with uh, uh, ropes or cords and they and every time they set up the tent they would set all these all these posts around to set up the fence and uh, nails it's, it's interesting because when Jesus got crucified or when they crucified people that's how you get hold down to die you you I mean it, we're told to constantly take up our cross and follow Jesus <clears throat> so it's a dying pro daily process of dying so how do you, you can't crucify yourself either because I mean you one hand you can crucify one hand, but then how are you going to crucify the other? You know, so, but I mean, it, this is a way to hold down or to stay upright, to keep upright um, the cords, to keep that post upright, you would have to put these strings. And I'm saying, this is what happens. My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart and tie them about thy neck. And it just reminds me of this court, how you would tie this post <laughs> to keep it straight up. And I'll, I'll give you more insight. Uh, look, for the commandment is a lamp and the light and the law is light and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So this is how you keep straight. I mean, and we see that if you want to, if you plant a little tree, um, you can straighten it up as long as it doesn't get old and brittle I mean you can pretty much straighten it up with the wires keeping it straight and that's what you're doing is keeping it and I think that's what the Bible means here um, you can keep it you can straighten up a, a, a tree or a life by reproofs constant thing things that constantly happen to us as Christians the Lord is working on us to keep us straight you know that is the capitals were made out of silver that's that's a redemption that's a redemption that's occurring daily. We're told to redeem the time. So there's two, re actually there's three redemptions. Uh, there's redeeming the, the soul, which ha the Lord does, and there's redeeming the time, which is now going on, and there's a redeeming of the body, which is gonna happen later on. We're gonna get a new body. So, so those three redemptions are going on, and sometimes you gotta be careful not to mix them. So the reproofs of instructions are the way of life. God will work on with us, on us, to straighten us up. And look at this. Here's here you can get, get an idea of the, what the tabernacle looked like. This is a good model, by the way. And you can see the the cords attached to the post. Um, how to keep this thing straight? And it must have been a job setting it up. And the Levites were in charge of doing this all the time. This is the sum of the tabernacle, even of the tabernacle of the testimony, as it was, as it was counted, according to the commandment of Moses for the service of the Levites by the hand of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. So here they're coming now to the culmination. This is the final, he's going to give you, this is, we already went through the whole thing, how to, who built it and what was it made out of and all this good stuff. Uh, and it, and we, we're told here, that means to have the oversight or the charge and we're told who it was the test the tabernacle the tabernacle of testimony and this is the tabernacle of testimony this is what i present to the world this is me um uh, to live a life that's upright and neighbors are watching you all the time they know you you know hey how come you didn't go to church today how do you we never talked about that since yeah i always see your car moving on sundays what are you doing here? They know that. They keep track of you. The tabernacle of testimony. And uh, for the service of the Levites, work of any kind. We talked about that. Anything you do, whether you sweep the floor for the church, or you, you mow the grass, whatever, service of any kind, it's gold. It's solid. Um, and of course, we said that the tabernacle stands for the body. That's what it is. The, uh, God... In, way inside in, in the Holy of Holies, that's where the Ark of the Covenant is. That's where God dwells inside of us. The Ark of Jesus is inside the Ark of the Covenant. Um, that's the presence of God. 
And look at that name, Ithamar. If you look closely, within Ithamar, you'll find Tamar. Tamar means a, bright, a brightness or a, a palm tree. But look what it says here. It's a, Ithamar means a habitable spot to be erect, because that's what a palm tree is. And also, and it's, and it's got the connotation of a dry land with a palm tree. Actually, it stands like for a little oasis, Ithamar. Oasis, and it means a fertile spot in the desert. That's what an oasis is. So God wants us to be that in a dry land, and this is we live in a dry land. Uh, God is. This is not where God is. I mean, the will of God is not being done in the world. So we live in. So we can be that little, that little habitable spot where God wants to. Because look what He says. It's a desirable spot. This habitable uh, oasis, uh, Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. So Ithamar stands for us. We're the sons of the priest, the high priest. Jesus is the high priest, the ultimate high priest, and we're the sons of the high priest. So we are a nation of. And the Bible calls us that, uh, a nation of priests. That's what we are. For the Lord has chosen Zion; He has desired it for His habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. So God says, I have desired. He has desired us. He wants to dwell within us. That little oasis, the oasis uh, in a dry land. So that's where God dwells. And Bessalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Aholiab, of the son of Eshemach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a cunning workman, an embroiderer in blue, purple, and in scarlet and fine linen. Now, we were told this at the beginning when the construction of the tabernacle was, we were given the, the details. We were told about this other guy, a holy man, a holy ab. But here we're told again at the end, first of all, we're told the Bessalel of the tribe of Judah, which means is Judah is spiritual. And I'll show you here shortly. Judah, it's amazing how the Bible, I just can't say it enough. The Bible is so amazing because everything crisscrosses and it just, it, it, you get insight. The more you read it, you get more insight because everything, every jot and tittle means something. Amen. But when God tells you, when you go into the book of Joshua, when they conquered the land and God starts telling you the land marks for the land where all the tribes were going to be situated. Why would God tell you that? If there, unless there was a reason, and he, there is a reason. With him was Aholiab of the tribe of Dan, and Dan is judge, or to be judged, something like that. It, it is a judge, to be judged, or judgment. And, holy, and Aholiab means tent of the father. Ah. What God is seeing, this is what I'm getting, that this body is really not yours. I mean, God, once you're saved, especially, it belongs to God. God says, it's really mine, you know? And, and so, because we've been bought with a price, we're told, and he, he's gonna tell us that here. Uh, and, and look what it says, Dan, Aholiab, uh, the tribe of Dan, <coughs> he was an engraver, he was a cunning worksman, and he was an embroiderer. I thought, man, he's just like a Bezalel. They're both the same. We were told that Bezalel, that's what he does. But we're told that he's got a friend that does the same thing. Ah, interesting. They're both working together. What does that mean? You always want to know that. What does that mean? These two guys are in cahoots. <coughs> well, and this guy is a judge, and he's doing all this work. And the blue, purple, scarlet, and linen, that's the gospel. This guy is working embedding things of the gospel. Just like Abessalil is doing it, he's doing it too. But Abessalil is doing it for one reason, and Dan, or uh, Holiab, is doing it for another reason. And he just told us, he's the son of, of the tent of the father. So he's telling us, this tent belongs to God. So you're gonna be held accountable you're going to be judged. That's what he's saying here. Uh, look, um, we're covered by the gospel. 
the, the veil was made out of this material, blue, purple, and scarlet. So was the door, and so was the, I mean, we were covered entirely. Our whole two parts, the, holies, um, the Holy of Holies and the Holy Place, we come to the Lord by the gospel. I mean, we were purchased by, his, by the gospel. And so we have our gate to the world should, be, should show what's inside us already. What's inside us should show up at the gate. So the people outside us should, uh, I was just getting my eyes checked uh, Thursday. And as I walked outside, I talked to a couple of girls in there. As I walked outside, I talked to the girl that was taking my payment and I took to, to the girl that was checking my eyes, blowing air into them, <laughs> you know? And uh, we got to talk, we got into a really conversation, but I had to cut it short because I know I'm gonna, she's gotta be working, you know? And so she's, she gets into it. And, uh, but I walked outside and there was a guy selling, trying to sell me insurance. And so I sat down and I said, oh, I got time. You got time, I got time. So I said, oh, can I have a, a blank piece of paper? And she says, sure. And so I showed him, I said, isn't that great? She says, are you a minister? I says, yes. You know, I, was, I nearly told him I'm a priest, because I am, but not that kind. But see, everywhere you go, you can show this. It's, the, the, what's inside should show, and that's what I think that means. Okay, now look at this. The tent of the Father, this, that's, I, I, I'm referring to the body. This tent belongs to God. For though I preach the gospel, what happened? See, that's the very mis first mistake I made since 1975. <laughs> right. For though I preach the gospel, God says, it's a necessity. I need to, I have nothing to boast about. Because God says, Paul is saying this, I need to preach it. It's, 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 it's incumbent upon me to preach it. And, and nothing I can boast about. Now, I want to show you this. Uh, this is the map of Israel. We're going to be covering this when we get to Judges, when we get to Joshua. We're going to be covering it. Uh, this is the way it's laid out. Okay? Now, when they come into the land, Joshua conquers the south first. The south is first conquered. And then he conquers the north. So there's a, that tells you the, from the very beginning, from the time they go into the land, there's a division. Because when you read the Bible, you think that the land divided after Solomon, right? Solomon had a son, his name was Rehoboam, and, and, and then he's the one that split the land because he was disobedient. But no, it really is divided at the very beginning. So this is the way I've been teaching it, folks. I teach that the north is the body. And I got plenty of reasons for it. I'm not just making that up willy-nilly because, you know, you'll see all kinds of insights. Uh, and the South is composed of two parts. Two parts. And you see that South is composed of Benjamin and Judah, but there's Simeon is in there and Dan is in there. But there's only supposed to be two tribes in the South, the soul and the spirit. Simeon we're going to deal with later. Simeon is a strange bird. He disappears into the woodwork. He just gets absorbed into the Judah. But Dan, uh, and of course, Benjamin is the soul. I see as the soul, and Judah is the spirit. Now, when Jesus dies for us on the cross, our soul got judged. It's been already judged. This is why our that soul is the precious part of us. That's, that's, that's us, that's the real us, the soul. And that's that one that's going to heaven. So once the soul is judged, Dan moves. It's the only tribe that moves. Interesting, when you read that, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it in the book of Judges, why they moved, but they moved. And so that means that the soul has been judged, but has, and some has to be judged yet. And that's the body. The body has been judged. So that, I know. Uh, that's the judgment awaits still for the body. Because God, we're told that 
whatever, if you build a life of, of sticks and straw, that's going to burn up. But if you have a life of gold and silver, you're going to retain that. You know, that's the judgment that's coming. Um, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Okay? Now, we're told this. Look at this story. This is a little story I have to tell you in 2 Kings 7, 8. There's a, there's a famine in Samaria. There's a famine in the north. And when these lepers came to the outermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried their thence silver, gold, and raiment and went and hid it and came again and entered into another tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. Now here's the, here's the scenario. Okay, there's a famine going on. The, the, the Samaria is being attacked by the Syrians, so the people are, 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 are in, they're in their castle with their walls. Samaria's got walls too. They're starving because it's a long siege. And so there's lepers, you know, you don't want lepers in the city. The lepers were always outside the city. Hey, you're gonna die anyway, get out of here. But the lepers that were outside, all of a sudden, they said, hey man, we're starving and the Syrians have food. They won't let us in the city, so let's go over to the Syrians. If we're gonna die, we're gonna die anyway. So if they killed us, we're dead. And when they get to the camp, encampment of the Syrians, they found that they were, the Syrians had heard an army coming in the night. They had heard the noise, the horses and all that. God did that. And they must have thought, the king of Samaria has hired the Egyptians to come and attack us and they left overnight they left they, they left everything and they left food they had left every their horses they left up and so the, when they when the when the lepers get to the camp encampment they find all this good stuff they say whoa man there's food in this tent there's food in this tent too wow check this out and that's what what it says here they went and eat and they ate and drank and they carried then silver and gold and raiment and then they went and hid it they hid it. I mean, they were finding all this good stuff. They were lepers. And they were finding all this stuff and they were hiding it. And notice how it says, silver is gold and raiment. Silver is a redemption. We have been redeemed. We're lepers. All of us are lepers. We have been redeemed. Gold is God has already saved us. God is inside us. And raiment, we're covered. We are covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You know, we're covered. That's the raiment. But the problem is, there's a problem here. These lepers were hiding all this stuff. They we're told twice. They hid it. And look what it says. <coughs> then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. It's a day of the gospel. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. And I think this is God warning us. God's warning us. We that have the gospel and we're just enjoying it, we're going to heaven. Oh, we're going to heaven. I'm going to get anybody. Oh, yeah. And I'm just going through life, enjoying life. I don't care. You're going to hell. Too bad. You know, I'm going to heaven. God says, that's not good. We're here to share the gospel. People are dying. I, th I think of all this, the caravan that's coming to the United States. I says, wouldn't it be great if, 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 the, if President Trump says, I need... 70 good, solid preachers of the gospel. Truly born again, we're going to embed you in the caravan. I says, take me, man, take me. Just to go work with them. Get as many saved, and by the time they get to the United States, you know, can you imagine getting those people saved? Oh, that would be tremendous. Because God wants that. But, you know, so here's the thing. Israel has been placed in the world at the unique place to spread the gospel, but they didn't do it. They faltered, but they didn't do it. And you can see their problem. They're blinded right now. And I think this story tells us that that can happen to us as well. Okay, so all the gold that was occupied, and I like that word, occupied. All the gold that was occupied for the work 
of the holy place, even the gold of the offering was 20 and nine talents and 730 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary occupied. And uh, this now, isn't that what we're told, occupied till I come? You know, that's occupied, that's to be busy um, in the holy place. And that whole, and I, I'm, I'm, I thought holy place, shouldn't it say holy place and the holy of holies? No, because one, once you're saved, the curtain is taken away. It becomes one place, a sacred place um, dedicated to God. The whole thing, the spirit and the soul is one place. So interesting because the gold, you'll only find the gold in the holy of holies and the holy place. You won't find gold outside on the body. Ah, let's look at this. Um, so the holy place, the holy of holies stands for the spirit. The holy place stands for the soul. And so this place, after the, and this is interesting too, after the shekel of the sanctuary. What does that mean? Because you find that phrase over and over. And this is what God says. Okay, 29 talents. And how much is a talent? I'm glad you asked, because I looked it up, and it's 3,000 shekels. Okay? 3,000 shekels. And that was a weight. They're all weights. You know, it's a, it's a, it, they're counting money by weights. And I think uh, a shekel or a talent, forget what it was, a talent was about 50 to 75 pounds. It varies with different sources, you know. Can you imagine 50 pounds of gold? How much that, oh, okay, that's a lot. So that's 87 shekels, 80,000 she shekels of gold, plus 750 <coughs> shekels, we're told there, 730 shekels. So you add all that up, that's 87,000 shekels, 730. Um, 50 pounds equals about, uh, or 50, that you multiply 29 shekels by 50 pounds, that's about 1,450, and there's probably more. But I just, to show you this, the gold was all favor of God. That's how they got the gold. They, when they left Egypt, they got the gold because God just gave them favor. That's how they got the gold. So that's just favor. Uh, and they came both men and women, as many as were willing hearted, and brought the, the, the bracelets, the earrings, the rings and the tablets and the jewels of gold, every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. So it was all God's favor. This, so that tells us that you don't save yourself. It's God's grace. You are saved by grace. Because he's never, he never tells you to, bra to, to bring gold. I mean, uh, uh, on, on purpose. He tells, it's a volunteer thing. So it's by God's grace. And so this, you are bought with a price. Be ye not servants of men. So this is what I'm saying. The inside, the holy place and the holy of holies, that's where the gold is. And you are bought by, a, you're bought by, and very expensive folks. You, if you, if we could see this, look, uh, uh, one pound right now, a pound of gold is about $20,000. And that's, I looked it up. That's what the price is. So if you had that much, look what you're worth. A baby is worth twenty. I mean, $28 million in today's market. I mean, that's what the Lord is saying. You're very expensive. A baby is that expensive. Um, so you're bought with a price, very expensive. You are very expensive. But he's also doing, and now we get to the silver. Now look at the, and the silver of them that were a number of the congregation was 100 talents, 100, and 1,703 <coughs> scored 15 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. So you have here the silver, of them that was numbered, the cost after the shekel of the sanctuary was, and, and by the way, this is, this is where he tells you, this is where he tells you, now the silver, every time you showed up at the temple, you had to bring silver as redemption. The rich shall not give more, the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for their souls. So the price of the soul is silver, half a shekel, silver. That's redemption. Now look at this. 603,550, that was the number of men that left Egypt, okay? That's, they didn't count women, they didn't count children. You had to be 20 and above to be counted, to be a soldier. So that was that. So if you time that times 
half a shekel, you come up to 301,000 shekels of silver, okay? So here we have 100 talents, that's what we're told, we're told here, it was 100 talents, and you multiply that through 3,000, 3, you come up to 300,000 talent, the shekels. Okay, and you add that 1,775 shekels, that's what is there, you add it all together and you come up to 300, to 301,775 shekels. It's given us all this because look what happens now. A becca for every man that is half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary for every one that, is, that went to be numbered from 20 years old and upward. For the 600, there's a number, 600,000 and 3,550 men. This is all the men. A becca is half a shekel. 600,000, there's a number of men. And now of the 100 talents of silver, this is all the silver that was gathered. 100 talents of silver were cast the sockets of the sanctuary. So God says, I've taken care of the seal of the gold, that's the inside, the outside, this is gonna have to be redeemed. This is gonna be, look what it takes. We know how many boards were in the tabernacle? 48. 48 boards. You multiply, because there was two sockets per board. So you multiply that times two, that gives you 96. He says, where's the other four? There's four missing. No, they're not, because they're here. And the sockets of the veil. The sockets of the veil, each one had a socket, each pillar. There's the four sockets. So you add those together, you come up to 100 shekels. I mean, 100 talents. And that's what we're told. There was 100, tal 100 sockets. A talent for a socket. You're going to redeem. You're going to redeem every post, everything. And here's something interesting, folks. The floor of the tabernacle was dirt. And it ha isn't it amazing you had this expensive structure with boards made out of cover, inlaid with gold, and yet the floor, there's nothing done to the floor. You know, when you first see that, that's weird. Why didn't they have a nice, expensive uh, Persian rug or something, you know? And then you put on top of that, you put the silver. I mean, I, that's the way I would have done. God didn't do it that way. He says, no, you can put it on the dirt. Interesting, because this is what I get from that. Look, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, through the law. It means this, I believe. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This silver, every socket, of the tabernacle itself was had sil it was resting on silver. Touch anything the thing that touches the earth of you is up to you. What you do on this earth, how you touch the earth, it's up to you. It's made out of silver. You can redeem it. That's what I get. So God is saying you can redeem this wherever you step. You're, 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 you're resting on the earth, on the dirt, on silver. Does that make sense? You know? Um, and then, of, of the 1,775 shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid the capitals and filleted them. So here you have, this is what I'm saying, two salvations. One has already been taken care of. God says, I took care of that. You're going to heaven. Once you believe Jesus died for you, once you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, you're in. You can go live in a desert and watch football games for the rest of your life. You know, not get involved with the world at all. And you still go to heaven. You're saved. But you'll have nothing to show. Because the other salvation is, what are you going to do for the Lord? 
because remember he talks about that uh, to a one he got five talents and look what it says Matthew 25 25 and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth Lo, there thou hast that is thine. And, he, the, and the master was very angry with the servant. He says, you foolish servant, you should have put that in the bank to us so I could accrue some interest. And I think that's talking to us. I know that in the New Testament, a talent is, is not ability, but availability. Because we're all given talents. To one, he, and God gives the talents. And we used to think that we're abilities we all have different abilities so it don't matter you know like I can compare myself to Reagan uh, Stacy's little girl oh she's she's a dog you know God has given her talents and her talents may consist of just a smile and that you know she's going to be rewarded for that and my talent consists of one of my, uh, 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 I would think if, if there was abilities, you know, uh, to draw or to do graphic work, but no, it's availability, uh, availability, because we all have that. We're all given at the beginning of the day, we're given 24 hours, identical. Uh, not, so we can't, we shouldn't compare ourselves to each other in a, and abilities because we all have different abilities and different uh, aptitude uh, levels so that God says don't do that if you're going to compare compare yourself to the God to the person you know in availability some people are more available than others so I think this is what this is referring to so you just I'm telling you folks I'm digging in there maybe just if, you, if it doesn't work leave it alone and the brass of the offering was 70 talents we need to leave uh, stop here uh, talents and the 2,400 shekels and therewith he made the sockets to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the brazen altar and the brazen grate for it and all the vessels of the altar. This is the, br the brass was used for all the, the, the other things um, that remain and that's what, that was brass. Once you covered, so you have 70 talents, you, 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 you multiply that, it comes out to what, 210 shekels of, of brass. And then you add that much and you come up with this total. That was the brass. And the sockets of the cord roundabout and the sockets of the cord gate and all the pins of the tabernacle and all the pins of the cord roundabout, they were all made out of brass. This tells you that there's judgment. All this is judgment. God says, you're going to be held accountable for this, for this time on the world, for this time that you have. You're going to be held. That's what I believe this brass stands for. So the gold takes care. That's already been taken. Your salvation been taken care of. And then the silver, that's for us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And then you're going to be held accountable. And I believe that's what this stands for. You're, you're saved already, but there's rewards and judgment losses okay and we'll close there let us pray lord god maker of heaven and earth thank you for what you teach us out of your book lord and thank you for all the many pictures that are found therein we give you all the praise the glory and the honor for beside you there is another god we love you lord amen, amen.